Hey everybody, happy holidays. Jim Masters here, and this is the Jim Masters Show Live, Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are you guys doing today? It's always nice when you're here watching from all around the world. We say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love and the support. Everybody's been talking about this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series that we started. Oh boy, I was counting it up. It's close to 600 episodes now that we have done just about seven days a week live. And as you guys know, it's an extension of the work I do in television and radio and stage and film. Absolutely love it. This has been really a blessing to do this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, which we do like a television series. All the comments, all the Instagram posts, the tweets, the Facebook messages, uh, some of the emails you guys have been sending to me, all at Jim Masters TV. I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of you have really been pouring your hearts out as far as why you really enjoy this series. It makes you feel good. It lifts you up. You learn something. There's lots of our famous light, love, and levity, or as we call it, <laughs> Jim Masters show levity here on the series, and we love it. So thanks for all of the uh, vim and vigor, the enthusiasm, the passion for this show. Uh, we're all snazzy today. Of course, our set is adorned for the holidays with all the holiday trim, looking nice and festive. And we worked really hard on this. We did this last year as well and said, we got to do it again. And of course, uh, look at the snazzy jacket I have on here, huh? Kind of cool. And uh, this is one of those jackets I mentioned that I wear when I do uh, Masters of Ceremonies work and other promotional work for MGM Resorts International. So because we have a renowned Emmy nominated costume designer who has worked with the biggest of the biggest, I'm talking about Broadway and Hollywood, television, film, and so much more. Yeah, I mean, she's seen stars in their underwear, <laughs> literally, and wrote a book with a title. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the extraordinary, the legendary Diana Eden. Um, when people want the best of the breast, that's the person that they call and have for many, many years. And uh, we're going to talk about her illustrious career and the people that she's had an opportunity to work with and uh, costumes she's designed for some of your favorite television shows and movies and theater productions and so much more. She works tirelessly. Uh, she's based in Las Vegas and uh, she is just living life and loving it. And we're so honored to have her here on the show. Again, you know, we love celebrating the arts and love also celebrating those who work behind the scenes to make it happen. You guys know I work in this industry too, so I fully get that and fully appreciate people who do this kind of work. All the loveties right now are commenting. Hey, gang, if you would like to comment during our show live, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the channel you're watching right now. That's Jim Masters TV. We would love that. And here is the information if you'd like to do that. It's just Jim Masters TV. There is that red subscribe button. You can click that. <laughs> It's right there on the YouTube channel. You see it there. It's that red button. There's no cost for that. Click subscribe and you'll be subscribed. Make sure you click the notification bell as well. We say that every show because sometimes some of our viewers, they haven't clicked the notification bell. And then when we do episodes of our live series, they're like, oh, I didn't know that was going to be on. I didn't know that guest was. If you click the notification bell, you'll always be alerted when we have these episodes of our series, which is generally just about every day. We have two shows today as well. Don't forget to give this episode and all the episodes you love of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series a nice hearty thumbs up. That's the like button that you see right there on the YouTube channel. And leave a comment for us as well. We would really, really appreciate that. Lots of comments coming in. Again, if you'd like to post live during the show, make sure you subscribe. And we would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel anyway. Let me tell you about our amazing guest. Again, coming in from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're so excited to have her here. Again, she's renowned. She's beloved in the industry. After a career as a dancer and actress, Diana Eden spent 30 years in Hollywood, costume designing, primetime television television series, soap operas, pilots, movies for TV, and feature films, plus dozens of stage productions both in Los Angeles and New York. Diana received an Emmy nomination for A League of Their Own, yes, plus two more Emmy nominations for NBC's soap opera, passions. Intending to retire, which <laughs> in these industries tends to 
rarely ever happened because you have such passion for it or your phone rings and you end up staying busy. She moved to Las Vegas, Nevada in 2008. However, instead of continuing to design films and things of that nature and doing the designing, she's teaching at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas and mentoring and producing costumes for Las Vegas entertainers. She's also writing too. And she's published so many incredible articles on places like journeywoman.com and costumedesignersguild.com, uh, pivotdancer.com, and the International Women's Writers Guilds Magazine Network. And when she's not doing all of these things, she is traveling. Now, her book, if you haven't had a chance to get a copy of it, it's a page turner. It really is something that has been a labor of love for her. And there it is, gang. Yes, there it is. <laughs> Stars in their underwear. It's really an incredible book. It's uh, her memoir covering her triple careers and her interaction with some of Broadway and Hollywood's biggest stars. It is available on Amazon.com or through Diana's website. Uh, and we'll talk about that as well. DianaEdenDesigns.com is the website. But there is the book. She's very proud of it. It really is uh, something you're going to want to get, read, and enjoy. And uh, again, we are so excited to have her here. She's coming to us live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks for all the comments. Again, I see all these comments coming in here. That is beautiful as well. But won't you join me in welcoming our very, very special guest, Diana Eden, to our show live right now. And again, keep the comments coming. If you would like to comment during the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to do that. And subscribe anyway, because we love it. Diana, welcome to the show. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you today? Is the sun shining in Vegas? The sun is beautiful today in Vegas. It's what we call cold, which probably means it's 50 something outside. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, uh, about can, 53 here. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Not bad for the East but Coast. I can see snow out my window up in the mountains that surround Las Vegas. Oh. It's quite oh, you can. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you a skier at all? No, 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 no. Yeah. Not even a ski bunny. I like to <laughs> <laughs> That is funny. Well, welcome to the show. Truly an honor to have you here. Again, you're a veteran, a legend in the industry, and you've worked with so many incredible people. Um, let's and congratulations on the book. That is really, I know, you know, writing a book is not the easiest thing. It could be uh, cathartic. It could be emotional. It could just be uh, really something extra special and you've put your heart and soul into it. So congratulations on that. And we'll, we'll talk about the book at great length in just a second, but love to know early on for you, Diana, what yeah. inspired you uh, to want to go into the industry? I know the dancer in you as well has yeah. always been something yeah. near and dear to your heart. Tell us about that early on for you. Well, um, as a little girl, uh, like many little girls, I, I went to ballet class and um, immediately took to it. And, and at the age of, I don't know, four or five, decided that uh, my life's career was already uh, spoken for. I was going to be a ballerina. And um, my mother took me to London. Um, I was This was in England where I was born and started my life and took me to see the Sadler's Wells Ballet and I, it was just magic. So I really got into the dance classes, the ballet classes. And then we moved to Canada and I continued. And by age 15, I uh, got this wonderful opportunity to join the National Ballet Company of Canada. And that was like a dream come through, true for a 15 year old. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like the opportunity to be a part of the ballet company like you say that must have been definitely a, a pinch me moment or two huh oh can you imagine i mean and most of the dancers in the company had been like my rock stars you know yes. they were the ones i looked up to and and you know so suddenly at age 15 i was one of them and um it was quite extraordinary. And we, we toured to Washington, D.C. 
and um, that was my first time in the in the great capital of Washington. And we were taken to the embassies for receptions and luncheons. And I mean, it it was pretty amazing for a fifteen year old. Mm. So, uh, was there a lot of additional traveling? when being involved in the dancing world for you? Did you get a ch chance to travel a lot? Um, not with the ballet. Um, the ballet, I just did the one engagement and then I very inconveniently uh, grew two more inches. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how that happens, right? Yeah. So my ballet career was ended almost before it began. Um, but once um, I finished college and uh, um, left um, Canada and went to New York, I auditioned for My Fair Lady. Um, you and they did. had, yeah, one touring company, the national company. And so I, I traveled all over the US. Now I'm 21, still very mm -hmm. naive and wide eyed. And, you know, uh, but seeing uh, the entire United States um, um, on My Fair Lady's dollar, it was, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> I yeah. got to see my first palm trees and I got to see San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge and um, went to see entertainers. Um, you know, after the show, we, we went to the Hungry Eye. We saw Phyllis Diller. I mean, it was just um, a wonderful year. What a, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you just yeah. listed out some of the great treasures of America, including oh, yeah. Phyllis Diller. <laughs> yes, it was just starting out and we thought uh, she was pretty wacky and weird, but we, before we knew it, we were quoting her lines, you know, backstage in between scenes and laughing. So uh, uh, I miss her. Something. I yeah. miss her. I miss yeah. all of that kind of humor. I miss the the Phyllis Dillers and the Rodney Dangerfields yes, and the, yeah. the Don Rickles and all of the, you know, the classic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, humorists of our time, yeah. really yeah. some of the best. Yeah. Um, so the dancer yeah. and then the costume designer, how did yeah. that happen for you? What was the entree? Were you always, you know, as a young girl growing up, were you always, admiring some of the costumes you saw on people on television film on stage was it something that was always an early interest for you diana uh, yes and no i mean i loved i loved sewing and my mother was a wonderful seamstress and and i love pretty things but you know remember in my mind i was going to be a famous ballerina so <laughs> you know i had no idea that there were any other careers for me um but I did love sewing and I actually toured with a little tiny singer sewing machine, which I wish I still had. It's probably worth a fortune. No, now. it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would, I would sew sort of in between matinee and evening performances. And some of my fellow dancers would say, would you make me this or make me a dress or, you know, um, trying to get out of my yeah, that little light's following you huh? light. yeah. <laughs> the, the sun is following you yes it, well. it's your it's just your it's your natural beauty and glow you can't <laughs> fight it <laughs> so um you know i was definitely inclined to designing um but what happened is after a number of years of performing and then um transitioning to acting and struggling with that career um Eventually, I fell into a situation where Anne Margaret um, had a huge nightclub act here in Las Vegas and was looking for someone to coordinate all the dancers' wardrobe. So um, I, I got the job because I knew about dancing and um, rather than knowing about costume design. And that led to everything. Uh, mm. Anne Margaret, I met Bob Mackey. And yes. Bob Mackey asked me to be his assistant. Um, and so I assisted Bob for two years, and that's where I kind of learned everything um, about costumes. And, um, you know, that was in the 80s where every major star was, there he is, yeah. One and only Bob Mackey. Oh, my what, Which, he, I mean, extraordinary. I, I would love yeah. to have an opportunity to interview him on the show, but uh, known for so much, yeah, you know another legend in the industry, and of Absolutely. course also known for that <laughs> that Scarlett O'Hara costume for Carol yes. Burnett. <laughs> yes, it's in the Smithsonian. I mean, of all things. Yes, she just yes. had to find, find it in the window and had to have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so he's uh, he's a contemporary, but somebody that you revere as well, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I what always was it like I working learned, with him. Oh, amazing! Yeah. I mean, I really learned everything about costume design from him, yeah. um, because I, I was there every day. I got to see him work. I got to see how he interacted with the stars that came through his door, which was just about every major star of yes. the time. Oh, yeah. Um, and I saw him interacting with all of his um, uh, artisans upstairs in the workroom with his cutters and fitters and beaters. And um, I saw his perfectionism. And uh, I just saw how things were done and how they were done right. Yeah. So, you know, that was really an amazing experience for me. Mm. So early on for you then with these opportunities, of course, you know, working with Bob Mackey is extraordinary. What would you say, I mean, working with him is an extraordinary door opening opportunity. What were some other door opening opportunities for you where people really started to notice not only your enthusiasm, your understanding of the craft, your passion for it all and your uncanny ability to really capture the essence of what it is they're trying to get across with their television show, their stage production, their film. You have to be able to, like an architect, before I went into the crazy business of television radio, I studied architecture oh. and mechanical drawing and all. So the art of design and you have to sort of bring to life the visions that the other creatives have, just like the mm -hmm. musicians do and the arrangers mm -hmm. and the composers do and the lyricists, yeah. you're on the other end doing that with the costuming. Yeah. Uh, what would be a few other wonderful well, breaks that happened that fostered this for yeah. you? Um, there was a, a young, fairly young, um, fairly unknown uh, country Western star um, and she was kind of on the verge of breaking out. And her manager um, wanted um, some, you know, new things made for her. She was going to be on the CMA Awards. And um, um, I don't think she could quite afford, afford Bob Mackey, but she could afford me. <laughs> <laughs> I met with her. And I thought, I know nothing about country Western. You know, I just, this is not me at all. I hope I can, you know, um, do something for her. Uh, we went to lunch and we had a great time. We got along well. And I suddenly had an inspiration of an outfit that I thought would be fun. Um, I was very much into doing patchwork at the time, patchwork quilts. And I had... Um, uh, a log cabin patchwork pattern uh, that felt kind of country and Western to me. I don't know. I thought ranch, log cabins. <laughs> so I um, designed a skirt um, made out of um, brown and rust um, patchwork and a lace blouse. And she wore it and she won um her very first uh, CMA Entertainer of the Year, and her name is Reba McIntyre. Oh, wow. Reba, yes. Reba. Wow. So that was, that was a wonderful experience. And, and uh, you know, getting to work with someone, she was on the verge of breaking out. I was on just starting my career, and we both were able to make magic happen with that outfit. And she wears it every once in a while. It's one of her favorite outfits. It has been on display at the uh, uh, Country Music Awards uh, Museum in Nashville. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you never know where inspiration is going to come from. Absolutely. You know what I love? The authenticity of where you are right now. I mean, you could see like, things hanging up. You see the iron. Yeah. I mean, it's like everything is right there. Tell us about the room that you're in. You also have beautifully framed, you know, uh, memorabilia there oh, from yes. years of your career. Yes. Yes. Well, let's see. Uh, here's Diana Ross, um, who I toured with, um, uh, in Europe and who I, uh, costumed and was her, costume assistant for Central Park in that famous, famous concert that got ra rained out. Oh, wow. And, yeah. 
And my kind of my little claim to fame there is I was crouched by the side of the stage as she was being buffeted by the, um, uh, the wind. And I got this inspiration. I don't know if you can see that if I could get her to come to the side of the stage and I would put on this orange cape, it was just chiffon. It wasn't going to protect her, but I knew it would you know, fly out the back. Yes, I remember yeah. that well. So that, that was you that came up with it? You know, because yeah. that was a brilliant idea because it just gave a certain feel as the wind was blowing and the cape yeah. was blowing. Yeah. I mean, it made her, she was already iconic, but all of a sudden now almost angelic and just like, you know, rising from the heavens or something. What a great idea. Those that, images went worldwide. It was just amazing. Now, was that one of those situations where that was on the spot thinking we got to do something now? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it just, I just knew, and I knew her and, and as she put the thing on and we were buffeted by the wind and I thought she's going to say, what are you doing? Now forget about this. And she got it on. She walked a few steps and then I could see it kicking in. Ah, I can work this. I can make magic with this cape. And, um, and she yeah. did. And she did. She yeah. did. That was iconic. That yeah. uh, was back in 1983. Oh, you're good. <laughs> and, yeah, that was in 83. And uh, I did a just a few years back. PBS uh, or WNET 13 in New York, who I've done a lot of work with, uh, they yes. brought that special back out of the vault yes. Yes, and it aired did. it again. And my yeah. one of my PBS colleagues, Denise Richardson, and I did some of the in-studio uh, PBS pledge breaks, but also oh, yeah. segments and commentary yeah. uh, about that whole incredible concert. Yeah. And really, yeah. that was amazing. And I always thought that was beautiful, the way that that sort of cape was blowing with yeah. uh, well if you watch it again you'll actually see me um come up with it and put it on her yes i remember that yes that is amazing that really so you know are there many opportunities have there been many opportunities where you've had to think quick on your feet when there are situations like that where you're like okay you know we've done designed this other thing for her but now this is what's going on for him or her where well, you got to come up with quick little fixes like that. Um, I'm sure there have been. Um, I can't think of one off the top, but she was very good at improvising. And I remember we did one concert in Hamburg um, and um, the audience was just so thrilled with her. She was already back in her dressing room and, and out of her gown. And the stage manager came to the door and said, Miss Ross, they won't yeah. leave. They won't leave. So I said, well, do you want to put a gown back on? And she said, no. She put on the white terry robe in the dressing room and went back on stage and sang, you know, one or two encores in the white terry robe. And it was mm -hmm. so brilliant because the audience just felt like, you know, it was such an intimate thing to do and it was so special for them. So and she had been drenched at one point and the winds yeah. were, and nobody wanted to leave. And it was right, like right, thunderous yeah. and uh, yeah. really epic. When you do watch yeah. it, uh, you have to like applaud her for her stamina, resilience, yeah. her can do and, and you and everybody that was there, a part of the crew, the team for what they endured Okay. Because it was really something. It was like a Super Bowl of events, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And that well, I, tell, I tell the whole story of in, that night in my book. In Shay the book. Here. Um, but um, I open, I, in fact, I open the book with that moment of the, the storm. And then in another chapter, I talk about touring around Europe and all the amazing things that happened, um, you know, at that time with her, she was such a huge star as she still is and will always be. But the, the audiences were so mad about her and she could do no wrong. And, uh, yeah. you know, for six weeks, I just was in this bubble, in this <laughs> heavenly <laughs> bubble. <laughs> Would you consider that of the many, many things you've done, one of your highlights one of the things that really just you know if you were to list like top 10 that's oh, definitely yeah. on your top 10 list 
You bet. You yeah. bet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And That's... especially <laughs> traveling from place to place by private plane. Oh my God. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> it was that is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, when people realized that was you sort of saving the day there, did anything yeah. come of that? Did the phone start ringing even more? Did your name get, I mean, your name was already established, but did yeah. it sort of heighten it even further? Because here you are in a monsoon in New York City and Central Park, yeah. and you're coming up with these brilliant ways to make sure the star is taken care of. I don't think at the time, because in my position with her, I was really her uh, costume assistant, and I was just transitioning to designing my own shows. And in um, 1985, I think it was, I got The Facts of Life, which was my first uh, regular TV series. Oh, as the yes. Designer. Charlotte oh, Ray and the gang. Yeah. 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 George yeah. Clooney. People forget George, George was on Clooney. that. Yes, I've seen him in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> One of the stars that she's seen in the yes. underwear. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, we're only from here up right now. Who knows with us, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You, you know, these days with the way everything's being done like this, you just yes. never know. Um, so that was great. Um, we had Charlotte Ray's son on recently. He wrote this fabulous book, you know, celebrating her and her illustrious career. Uh, I mean, I remember her back when she was uh, Miss Molly on Sesame Street. She was the mail lady on Sesame mm -hmm. Street mm -hmm. and so many other things. Um, yeah. What was it like working on the set of that beloved NBC sitcom, The Facts of Life, with that cast and crew? Oh, well, it was great. Um, anytime you can do a, a weekly series and be part of that kind of um, uh, TV family or film family, um, it's wonderful. And of course they had already been, they had done five seasons by the time I joined them. So, uh, they were probably equally nervous about me as I was about them. Um, but, uh, pretty soon they realized that my mission in life was to make them look and feel their best when they're on camera. And, um, you know, nothing was more important to me than that. So, um, you know, I loved yeah. them. I love those yeah. girls. Still yeah with some of them i was gonna say uh do you still stay in touch with uh some of the the folks from facts yeah, of life absolutely yeah. um and the crew as well i mean it's not like a daily thing hey kim yeah. how are you doing you know yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> but no we all know what each other's up to and um yeah do you want to slide to the right so you don't end up on the ironing board or do you think that's it looks kind of cool. Looks like Hollywood. Like there you go. I think that. Yeah, so now that will. Okay. Yeah. All there right. you now go. You'll see more of the mess behind me. Hey, that you're doing. You're 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 doing your thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, I know I could. Otherwise, you're going to end up out in the ocean. Well, you know, in Las Vegas, <laughs> no ocean. Out in the desert. <laughs> out in the desert. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you have um, worked again with some of the most iconic uh, folks the beloved Betty White. Tell us about, yes. And she, didn't she just, or is turning 100? She will turn 100 on July. I think it's July 18th of next year. God bless her, huh? God yeah. bless her. A treasure. And um, the first time I worked with her, it was on a TV show called Ladies Man. Oh, and sure, I think yeah. he was just turning 80 at the time. And we thought, we thought that was really old. And even that was amazing. <laughs> but, oh my goodness, she is so sharp and witty and adorable and um, so professional. And uh, she used to sit quietly backstage in between scenes. And um, uh, she, she was just fabulous. And then I got to work with her on another film called Stealing Christmas mm -hmm. up in Vancouver yes. and we had some more fun then. That is fantastic. And yeah. she just really is, um, one of those people that, you know, when you meet her, uh, lives up to what your hope is. Um, Absolutely. There, there's been a couple of people through my career. I've had an opportunity to meet that, I've always wanted to meet in some way, shape or form yeah. um, and chat either chat with or be at a gala event with them or, what, or whatever it may be. 
and they matched exactly what I had hoped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carol Burnett. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Warm, approachable and yeah. affable. Yeah. And um, Florence Henderson. Oh. Florence Henderson mm -hmm. was yeah. warm and funny yeah. and, and yeah. affable as well. And, and there's yeah. so many that you have met. How about Cloris Leachman? <laughs> <laughs> an entirely different personality. She got spunk, like Ed Asner said about Mary Tyler Moore. She <laughs> had spunk. <laughs> yes, yes. A very strong character, but you know, a wonderful woman. Yes. Um, and um, very um, opinionated, but in a funny way. I mean, um, yeah. She let you know what she f felt about things, but it was never coming from a mean point of view. Right. And very often it was coming from either a personal point of view or from um, a knowledge point of view. Right. Um, you know, if she wanted to look a certain way. Um, so, um, but here she is looking absolutely beautiful. And I think this was a scene in one of the um, Facts of Life weddings. I think it was Joe's wedding. Joe's wedding, yeah. But she also was completely willing to go and do a character thing. And we had one show on Packs of Life where everybody was supposed to age uh, 20 years. And she completely went with it. You know, um, we had her in the scruffiest old dress and um, this big baggy um, kind of bra underneath and, and a car. There she is. And she completely. Wow, look at that transformation, huh? Look at that. And this is, you know, within the same year. Wow. That's how good an actress she is. And she has she has no vanity when it comes to being a character. She'll go sure. all the way. She goes all out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah one of the classics, uh, you know, in terms of people that always did that. Um, now, for just the knowledge building of the audience mm -hmm. with things like that. Are you working, you playing off what the producers want? The, are you working with the writers? Obviously you're working with the makeup people as well. Is it all, is there a collaboration of oh, what's happening through the whole process? Yeah. Tell absolutely. us a little bit about the process. Well, um, I mean, it, it all starts with a script. So if the writers have decided this week's episode uh, is going to be about, um, the girls and, and uh, Beverly Ann, who Cloris played, uh, visualizing themselves 20 years or 30 years from now. Um, that's what I must produce in terms of wardrobe. Um, so that's where it starts. And then there's more conversations with the producer and director about what they're looking for. And then I go to work and I I talk, in this case, I talk with the girls because, you know, it's their characters that we have to, to build. And I bring in things for them to try on. And, um, um, uh, you know, we, we find a look that works. And then uh, hair and makeup is the last. And um, so uh, I'm reading some of these sweet things that people are writing. That's why I'm... <laughs> yes, Linda in Florida. Um, uh, nice. Diana Bellet is oh. what you have as a career, but out of your other career interests, which was your favorite. So the dancing, costume yeah. designing, things of that nature, an author, published author, a variety of things, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's you, hard you, to say because I, in a way I feel like they're all combined. When I wrote, yes. I was writing about dancing. I was writing about costume design. When I was costume designing, I was designing for dancers. I mean, it. in a way, I feel like it's all kind of just joined together somehow. It is all joined together. Exactly. And that's what makes it exciting because you can, yeah. you know, play off the various different uh experiences that you have got some more wonderful photos that you've generously shared justin hartley of course who wow. was we know him from this is us but yeah. many other things i believe it was the young and the restless but also nbc's passions yeah i love it when i worked with an actor and then um they go on and they grow and they become you've even had even many well that have done that yes, yes. yeah exactly so you were working on the 
the outfits for the soap opera. I mean, you've had an opportunity to work with the soap operas too. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, that's kind of fun because um, um, it's ongoing. It's like day after day after day. So you kind of have a steady job, which is both good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, have a fairly good budget. So, you know, I got to dress beautiful people in beautiful clothes. Yes. And I love that because, um, um, you know, I love to make people look and feel gorgeous. And yes. on the soap opera, uh, you get a lot of opportunities to do that. So passions. Did you work on other soap operas as well? Uh, I only did one other, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, yes. Yeah. Also on yeah. NBC. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. So both of those gave me an opportunity, not only just to design, you know, evening gowns and wedding gowns, but um, also, you know, unique situations that somehow the writers would come up with. Um, they on soap a, operas, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did that. We did a whole week of takeoff on Pirates of the Caribbean, and I think you may have a picture of Mackenzie Westmore um, dressed in um, her dress for I what was that dress. like doing yeah. that oh it was fabulous because you know i had the opportunity to to make things design things from scratch i had my own workroom i had milliners i had shoemakers it was like i was doing a feature film um but you know without all the pressure <laughs> yes so i got to do it all and we built all of those costumes and yeah. um um, Incredible. You know, Kenzie Westmore in particular is is quite exceptionally beautiful, and uh, to to dress her as patients um, in in her period gowns was just wonderful. That now, which one is that? Is that it's uh, a gray? It's a gray dress, and she's in a barn. I think. Yeah, there, there it go. is. Yeah, now that's fantastic. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, again, that's yeah. beautiful. How long does it take to conceptualize? And then actually, phys I mean, are you, yeah. you're, you're conceptualizing it, but are you doing, you're doing the physical sewing alterations, all of that to, from start to finish, or do you bring well, other people in? the department in? is. Um, no, I mean, and, and in soap operas, you have very little time because yes. you, know, you get the script, and you maybe have two weeks. That's it. And um, so all of a sudden there's a big push and, uh, um, you know, I had a wonderful workroom with uh, seamstresses who who uh, took my sketch and made the pattern. Um, and we bought fabrics and uh, she actually had multiples. She had three of these style of gowns and each one was, you know, had the crinolines and the bum roll, as they call it. The, um, and the hat was made. Even the shoes were made. Um, so... Um, it was wonderful to, to have the opportunity within the soap opera opera to to do some period work like this. Which is really fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, there's a lot of period um, productions that seem to be happening too lately. I know PBS has done a lot of them oh, yeah. over the years, but there seems yeah. to be a real, well, look at that whole Downton Abbey you know, scenario. And, you know, being yep. from England originally, what part yep. of England do you hail from? Kent. I'm okay. about born halfway between London and Brighton. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, our uh, lineage, um, I'm English, Irish, Swedish, and French. And I think we yeah. found some Norwegian and Finnish in there too. But the English side is on both mother and father's side. Oh. Father's side, master's uh i'm the fifth james they hail there's english and irish in it but the master's side hail from yorkshire oh yeah okay. yes it must be why i love pudding so much <laughs> <laughs> Yorkshire so, pudding, maybe <laughs> so, so how would you say it would you say masters 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 oh i've lost my english accent yeah there you go <laughs> Little, there are a little couple of words still, yes. which is beautiful. It still yeah. sort of flow out a little bit. Here's another great shot. Tell that us about was this. thank you. Um, <laughs> that was funny. I um, there's so many weddings in in um, soap operas, and I always like 
when I get see that the wedding is coming up in a script to do something a little different. So I actually copied this largely from my mother's wedding gown. Did you really? The big cutout in the back, um, which was 1936. And um, it was a bias cut white satin dress with little tiny buttons all the way down. And to make it a little bit more sexy, soap opera, I said, well, let's let's show some skin in the back because the front was very chaste and it had this white lace collar. And uh, I happened to notice years later on some of the uh, comments, um, it was before, you know, social media was quite as common, but some of the fans absolutely hated it. They said, what is it with that dress and the collar? Really? Well, I'm, I'm poking fun at myself yeah. because a lot of them, you know, think of wedding gowns as having great big full skirts and, yes. yards, and yards. And and here I had done this bias cut 1930s dress. But the great thing about Mackenzie was, you know, she's such a beautiful woman and she was game for anything. I, when I game. came to her with the idea, I said, can I do a 1930s, you know, wedding gown for you? She said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So um, beautiful. And, yeah. And the, the, our loveities, uh, our viewers, <laughs> matter of fact, they've already said, uh, Diana, you're a gym master show lovety. You're already one of the loveties oh, and the lovety oh. family of all these Thank accolades you. and Emmy nominations and everything. <laughs> how does it feel to be a lovety on the gym master show? I Pretty cool, it. huh? <laughs> <laughs> Are your feet tingling? That's usually what people say happens. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the feet tingle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's another shot. Now, oh yes. yeah, Juliet Mills. Juliet yes. Mills uh, was um, the star of uh, Passions, and she yes. played. Yes, that's And right. she has uh, a baby. Yeah. And the baby was played by this little girl called Nicole Cox, I believe. And normally we always have twins um, because when one baby is fussing, then they bring in the other baby. Yes. And for some reason, when Nicole first worked on the show, she was only six weeks old. Um, they couldn't find another baby or there was no, tw I don't know what happened, but so they took a chance and they just had her and she was so good. So they kept booking her with no twin backup. I think her first words were action and cut. <laughs> she knew that when they said action, she, she couldn't knew. make a sound. Yeah. And, mm. um, you know, so this was a scene where they were going bathing together. For some, I don't know why they're in, in 1920s. I have no <laughs> idea. But uh, so we made the little um, 1920s bathing outfit for Juliet and then a smaller one for Nicole. Wonderful. That's fantastic. Yeah. Of course, I remember Juliet back from when it was Nanny and the Professor. Exactly. That yeah. series as well. Yeah. yeah. Here's another wonderful shot. Oh, ah. yes. 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 We were doing at this point, we were doing a takeoff on the, on uh, Wicked. So, oh, yes. Yeah. We did a whole week of uh, production of uh, Wicked. So I got to kind of design my own version. Um, that like, is cool. Yeah, so Georgia Engel and, and Juliet. Yes, and uh, Georgia, yeah. we just lost not that long yeah. ago. Yeah, not that um, long ago. Yeah. yeah, she was really something special. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to write the book, and again, congratulations. I love the cover, too. Thank you. Um, Thank that's you. your You designed the cover? Uh, no, I have a wonderful designer, um, a young lady who I've known since she was a baby. Um, I designed the image of Angelica Houston, who is the character there. Exactly, um, yeah. And I called Marissa and I said, I need a cover. And she is a, a graphic designer. And um, I told her the feeling that I wanted. I, you know, uh, and we just worked together. She'd send me a- Really uh, beautiful. And I'd say, well, I like this part, but not that part. And I don't know if you've noticed, it's very, very subtle. But there is a reflection, a shadow of Angelica Houston that's actually a dancer, a ballet dancer. I see okay. it. Yeah. So it's just. Is there anything else from the actual physical book that you'd like to share, whether it's a passage or a photo or something to people to get a good feel for the book itself? Because uh, this audience, the Jim Master Show Lovety audience, they are very reactive. Oh. They are already commenting. They want the book. And yeah, they usually jump oh. on things right away. 
Well, um, gosh, um, you took me by surprise, but there are, um, there's a chapter here on a league of their own and about uh, dressing Bubbles, the chimp, in a uh, Peaches costume and um, what that was <laughs> like. Let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is it like? You know, they do say something about working with children and working with animals is a yeah. unique thing. How about, you know, dressing a, a, a chimp? <laughs> well, <laughs> here, here is a little bit. It says, um, Bubbles is cast as the mascot for the Peaches team and has to have a Peaches uniform. My assistant, Kiki, calls the trainer and asks for Bubbles, Bubbles measurements. Chest, waist, his long arms, shoulders. Wait, do they have shoulders? We apply what we usually ask for when measuring humans, but find it pretty funny. Isabel, our seamstress, looks askance at the measurements we provide. All proportions seem off, and none of us are sure how it's going to look. But when Bubbles is brought in for a fitting, he stands on the cutting table as we try on his peaches outfit, and he looks at me with his big brown eyes. The dress is okay, but a little big. Can I pin it? I asked the trainer. Will he be okay with that? Yes, he replies, as long as you don't stick him. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that is funny. The experiences, you know, it's one yeah. of those things where you could say to somebody like you, you could write a book, but you did. Yeah. yeah. What was that process like? Um, you know, it's a, it's an unusual thing. Some people think, oh, you just start writing and that's it. But how did you know when to start the book? You know, those first few lines yeah. on the page. And then how did you know? When were you comfortable enough to put the period on the last sentence? You know, a lot of times mm. there's much more you can add than yeah. you, you edit it and you could go, you know, the book could become Moby Dick. But in yeah. this case, how did you know when to begin and how to begin and when to be comfortable enough to finish it off? Well, um, the beginning part had been a long process because I'd had various ideas over the years. And the title actually comes from 10 years ago when I was pitching another version of the book, which was going to be more about how to be a costume designer. And a potential publisher said, well, it's a very niche audience. How many people are really interested in costume design? You know, um, no one really wants to learn about how to be a costume designer. And I said, ah, oh, but that's not what the book is about. It's much more about how to deal with stars in their underwear. And of course, the moment I said it, I knew I had a winner. <laughs> um, because stars in their underwear, it's, yes. <laughs> it's about, uh, you know, the celebrities, but it's about how they are um, when they're most vulnerable, um, yes. when they are do not have their persona on and what it's like creating their characters with them. And, um, you know, so I had already a lot of stories that I had written as kind of blogs or ideas. So I thought, well, all of those stories are there waiting to be told. And I wrote the first draft, um, which is kind of... Um, the version that I call, I did this and then I did that and then I did this. Um, and I realized that it now needed a shape. Yes. So I went to a, a week long uh, writers conference with the International Writers Guild, um, Women's Writers Guild, and uh, took workshops uh, with some amazing writers and learned, you know, that you have to have a story arc and you have to have things that connect Yes. and how to engage the reader. Um, and so um, then I did the second draft and I kind of had a deadline. I didn't want to be, this to be, um, you know, that at 10 years from now, I'm still be saying, yes, I'm writing a book. You know, so this happy. was a self-imposed deadline, self-imposed deadline. And, um, um, you know, I like working with deadlines. That's sort so you of got it. Yeah, it keeps your motive. So, how long did it actually take? Well, the entire process was two years, from kind of the first beginning of the first draft to um, the publishing. Right. And you know, then you gather all of the photos, and then you've yeah. got the releases, and make sure you're not infringing on copyrights. And, yes. 
um, all of that. And uh, how did you know when it was done? That could be one of the harder things too, is because you think of a lot of things that you could add or maybe subtract. How did you know when you were comfortable with it being your memoir and being finalized? Yeah. I was most worried about the last chapter, to be honest. Yeah. I wasn't sure because everything else had been so full of highlights and so many highs. And I thought, I can't just end the book saying, well, I retired and that's it. <laughs> it's a horrible letdown. I'm now ha uh, having banana coladas with my feet in the sand in Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, it took a while before I really found a way to end the book. Um, and, um, uh, it, uh, it actually was a quote from Norman Lear. Uh, uh, Norman Lear. God person. bless him. Yes. Yeah. 99. Uh. I, know. I know. But he talked about, um, you know, there being two posts, one being over and one being next, and that you must sling a hammock between the two and relax and not worry until the next happens. Mm. And that really spoke to me because, um, you know, I'm always looking ahead, what's going to happen next? What, what can I do differently? Or, you know, and the idea that you could just be in the moment and, and relax between over and next was very powerful. So yes. I did the book. I now, I bought a hammock. It's in my backyard. <laughs> And I love lying in it. If you visit Las Vegas, gang, and you see a lady swinging back and forth in a hammock, it's the only hammock in town, and it's, she's the one in it. Right. <laughs> that is fantastic. He did a video, just a like a regular video, I think on his cell phone recently, Norman Lear, yeah. uh, where he's in Vermont, and he's on a porch. I don't know if you saw it. He's, he's in like a T-shirt with his yeah. glasses. Um, the hat, of course, the is famous hat, hat yeah. famous hat. And it's great. Uh, you know, when you have a little thing like that, it's uh, great for branding, but it's just part mm -hmm. of the, the whole persona. And, um, it was brilliant. It was him talking about life at 99 years old on the porch. Mm -hmm. It was only him. The family's inside the house doing their thing. They might not have even known he was doing this. And he said, you know, sort of along the lines of, you know, being 99 and all the things he's done and all the places he's gone, all the people he's worked with, all the accomplishments, the accolades and everything else. But he said, look at the view. He mm. says, I'm, I'm on a porch in like this country home and the camera turns to the view of the mountains and the Vermont countryside, which is of course stunning. And the camera comes back on him Kind of like what you're talking about, yeah. you know, uh, they talk about our birth and our death dates, but the dash in between yeah. the dates are what's important and what we do with it. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of talking about who's more blessed than me. Find one person that's more blessed than me. Yeah. I'm 99. Yeah. I'm on a porch with a yeah. lemonade looking at this view. We're in a house that was my wife's and mine, our country house in Vermont. It's mm -hmm. now you know, taken over by the kids. They have the house. Who's more blessed than me? Yeah. And it was simple. It was basic. Uh, not a lot of production, just a cell phone talking. And it was so beautiful to hear mm -hmm. that, you know, from somebody that has yeah. done it all and is yeah. 99 and understands what life's all about. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we spend so much time striving that, you know, it's quite difficult to learn how just to be and to enjoy just being in the moment and accepting and appreciating and all of those yeah, good yeah. things. All of those things. Mm -hmm. For you, what was the attraction to moving to Las Vegas? Was it all the shows and all the productions and all the opportunities in Vegas? Um, it was a place uh, when my husband and I were kind of thinking about moving and retiring. Um, I said, first of all, I have to have sunshine and warm weather. Sorry, but that's a must. Um, and um, But we wanted to move somewhere that was the perfect combination of cosmopolitan, hip happening, and at the same time, laid back and relaxed. Yeah. And believe it or not, 
um, those who only know Las Vegas for the shows and the casino, right. they don't know about all this wonderful surrounding area, all these communities and yeah. beautiful homes and mountains. Henderson and some of the other places. Yeah. yeah. So we figured that, you know, as long as I had sunshine. <laughs> You'd um, be very happy. Yeah. There were shows to see. My husband worked as an actor and he got work in Tony and Tina's wedding. And I started to get work um, in some films made locally. And that led me to UNLV where I was asked to teach. So that part of Las Vegas is very sophisticated and, and um, involved and, you know, perfect. And then when we don't want that, um, you know, I, I come home and I lie in my hammock. <laughs> Just trying to envision oh, yeah. that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's you've got it all worked out. The yeah. the teaching, yes. mentoring, inspiring others, and yeah. doing that again at the yeah. University of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Yeah. Tell us about that aspect of your life and how much you really enjoy that. Well, I love you know I love film. Um, I love costumes, obviously, and I love young people. Um, and if I can do nothing more than just inspire them to be passionate about their careers, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't care if they memorize every last fact about costume design, uh, but I want them to be excited when they go to a film. I want them to look at a film and see things that really turn them on. Yes. And if I can open their eyes to a part of film that they're not used to looking at, which is the costume design, um, and I'm not just talking about the big period films. You know, it's easy to admire the costumes on a, you know, um, Downton Abbey or something. But to look at the costume design for contemporary films, for um, sci-fi films, and yes. see what goes into it. So that's that's what's fun to me. And you know, I'm for one one day a week, um, sometimes a little more. I'm I'm around all these kids, and they're early twenties who are the beginnings of their career. And that's, that's always good. Isn't that incredible? Right. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they come up with some fascinating things too, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Of course they don't know any of the films that I know or any of the stars that I worked with. <laughs> Tell us about <laughs> Tell, They'll have to, they can, but now they can Google them. Yeah. <laughs> When you uh, mention the name, they do know, but there's a lot of others. That they tell know. us about some of the other names, the other folks we haven't mentioned that you've had an opportunity over the years to to work with. So many. Oh. Well, we've mentioned Claris and Betty, um, Tony Danza. I worked with a lot. I did two or three TV series for him and um, film. Um, oh gosh. Um, you know, it's amazing. I, I, when I watch TV today, I practically always know people in the cast. They go, oh, yeah, I costumed him. I costumed her. Um, I costumed a 15-year-old Kaylee Cuoco um, in her very early career. Um, she played the daughter, uh, Tony Dance's daughter, in one of the um, pilots I did. Mm -hmm. so it was fun to see her. Did you work on um, Who's the Boss? No, no. I did a series for him right after Who's the Boss. Who's the Boss, yeah. Yeah. Um, and also New York, Broadway. I mean, yeah. 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 Tell us about some of the shows you've had an opportunity to work with uh, oh. as well. Well, I mean, I really feel <laughs> like I was in the golden era of Broadway. I'm sure everybody thinks the era is the golden era, but I mean, when I was going to work every night um, on Broadway, um, you know, down the street was um, Carol Channing and Hello Dolly. Uh, Barbara yeah. Streisand was at the Window Garden and Funny Girl. Um, uh, oh, what's her name? Um, sorry, I went blank. Uh, Blythe Spirit. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Christopher Plummer was across the street. Um, uh, the um, so many people, uh, so many shows. Uh, Sammy Davis was in Golden Boy. Um, it, it was an extraordinary time with a lot of amazing shows. 
and um, I got to, you know, be in a Hal Prince show with Stephen Sondheim mm -hmm. and and some of the greats of, of the Broadway uh, era, my Broadway era. So what was that, that like? I mean, Prince and Sondheim. I mean, now you're talking epic. Uh, we just lost uh, Sondheim. Yeah. I know we've back. lost. Yeah, we've so lost many. Many of them. Hal Prince is gone and and. Um, well, you know, a Broadway show is a much smaller cast than a film. Yes. So you do become very tight. Uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. I joined um, six months into its run. Uh, I think there's 18 in the cast and, um, uh, you know, backstage crew, another dozen. So everybody knows everybody and, and uh, you feel really I always felt very special being a Broadway dancer. I um, I felt like I was part of an elite group. And I say that not from snobbery, but yeah. from pride. I mean, I, I knew that to be a dancer in a Broadway show meant mm -hmm. I was at the top tier. Yes, and yes. I don't mind saying that gave me a lot of pride. It's kind of a, a club that you feel quite special about. Isn't that incredible? Sure. We, we just had a great guest on, um, Jessica Radetzky. She is one of the dancers, you appreciate this, yeah. for uh, the Phantom of the Opera and has okay. been for 20, almost 20 years now. Oh, my goodness. Which is a long run, right? Yeah. With yeah. a demanding show like the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway, yeah. the Broadway yeah. run. Uh, and fascinating to hear, you know, the the physicality of it too. I mean, there's, there's the mental fortitude, but the physicality yeah. of being a dancer, especially like you're saying, Broadway shows, theaters where there are matinees and evening shows, yeah. you know, seven days a week, whatever it may be. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of demand, huh? Yeah. How did you, yeah. how did you work through it all? Well, um, you know, I was a very dedicated dancer. I went to class every day. Um, and uh, there were different classes around town. There was a famous, famous um, jazz uh, teacher who really is like, they call him the father of modern jazz, Luigi. And 11 o'clock in the morning in his studio, I think it was 58th and 8th or something like that. And I mean, all of the dancers would show up for class. Um, and I um, uh, went to ballet class. Um, I went to different styles of um, jazz class. Um, so, you know, you were constantly training. You were training to keep up your um, abilities, but also to expand them. And, you know, having come from a ballet background, my, my dancing style was very lyrical and very kind of, you know, up. And I had to kind of get down and funky <laughs> with the jazz. <laughs> dancing i try and picture myself now doing hip-hop and that would have been quite a sight but that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to adjust to what is happening and yes. um you think about well west side story which i'm seeing tomorrow yes that dancing was revolutionary mm -hmm. and i saw that show and it, it changed mm -hmm. my life it we really had uh george takiris was a guest on the show too oh wow. and he was amazing he just oh yeah absolutely. i saw him over and over because i saw the show like six times because did you yeah it was that extraordinary a show mm. rita moreno i mean yeah. these are treasures yeah yeah a absolutely um and again you know this prolific career that you've had which has been extraordinary um you know but one thing that you have always been is consistent you're you know you're dedicated you're consistent mm -hmm. you know i know that uh people have always been able to, to depend on you but it's this consistency that you have which is uncanny oh my god <laughs> <laughs> consistency <laughs> there she is there she is she hasn't changed her hairstyle in umpteen years <laughs> take but, us through the years there what a great we we did a little digging wanted to surprise yes, you and that's and that's yes. fabulous that's hilarious that's yeah. just hilarious well far left i was probably you know four years old in england 
with the little Peter Pan color. And I think that's a smock dress my mother used to do. And then I think, I don't know how old is a school picture from, I don't know, how old would I be there? <laughs> <laughs> and then I maybe think. 12 maybe. Camera, or... Yeah. And then the next one, I think I'm in Canada. Still got the same little Peter Pan collar. I just noticed that. Nothing, you know. And then I said, no, I'm going to uh, <laughs> go with the world of Hollywood and glamour. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is fantastic. Yeah, I, I love that. Hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Who's that beauty? Wow. wow. Well, that's what from the shot. 70s. Yes, you did some digging. Yes, we um, did. Yeah, in the early 70s, I was still really wanting a performing career. And um, I was trying to make it in um, TV and film as an actress. Yes. And, um, you know, I still wish in a way that I'd been able to hang on and do it. Yeah. Um, at the time... There were way less roles for women and you yes. were either the chick or the grandma, you know, mm -hmm. and I was neither one. I was not the chick. Um, and um, this is a fabulous shot. That's um, a photo. Uh, when I was about 22, I worked for a photographer in New York called yes. Peter Bash and he was a glamour photographer and he needed someone to answer the phone and, go through his mail and instead of paying me um we would do photo sessions so that's uh, a fantastic uh, shot you know how they say especially when it comes to uh photography yeah it's it's all in the eyes mm -hmm. and very very expressive eyes there wow. thank you absolutely you know yeah. that's a that's a fantastic shot yeah and so is this one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great you know, they get to see you in these different roles here. Oh, this is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was, that was, yeah, the hairstyle then. I don't even remember what this picture was from, but uh, um, yeah, early 60s, I would think, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a great shot. Yes. So you were really, you know, pursuing it and, and going at it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're you're so such a talented person. Remember, I said you were talking about the Diana Ross uh, situation, where you've had mm -hmm. to think on your feet and be responsive to what's happening. You know, yeah. um, what's the trend and what's hot and what's happening before you, and uh, you are uncanny at how you do that, <laughs> even with the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> now that is what you call i mean yeah. that is like even she makes that the pandemic look glamorous yeah. yeah that's funny yeah i wish we could have worn those masks instead of the awful ones that's here good. but um yeah, tell us about this this is so cool <laughs> well it was when they first were coming out with a face shield and i thought oh thank goodness we don't have to wear those awful masks we can wear these face shields and they're more comfortable and i'd seen someone wear one so I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And then, of course, we were told they didn't do a darn thing for, you know, protecting you from COVID. But <laughs> but it looked fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this oh, shot. Yes. Deborah Messing. Oh, my God. I loved working with her. Um, I did two seasons, two years with a show called Ned and Stacy mm -hmm. uh, with Thomas Hayden Church. And um, it was a great show. It had a really, um, they called it a cult following. In other words, we weren't getting the big numbers, but the people yeah. who loved the show loved, loved it. the show. Right. And I, I feel like I did some of my best work on that show. Yes. Um, and um, really got to, for a sitcom, um, I got to do some really different things. This yeah. obviously is quite different. On yeah. Death. But um, cool, yeah. yeah I think the storyline is, uh, oh. Even you get in on the act. <laughs> that is my beloved husband, my late husband, Dominic, who uh, had a great sense of humor. 
And every year for 28 years, our Christmas card would be something as ridiculous as this. And whenever, wherever we went in the world traveling, uh, we would dress up. Uh, we had a picture in the gondola in Venice. We had a picture uh, on a motorcycle outside the Colosseum in Rome. And this was in Spain at the uh, bullring in uh, Ronda. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and that's all you. That's all your. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> This is, um, this is from Passions, and this is a scene we filmed over at Universal Studios in their Mexican town, mm -hmm. um, and somehow they had a storyline where uh, these two were, um, they weren't getting married, but they were having a commitment ceremony, commitment I think. Ceremony. Yeah, yes. and it was so pretty because we were in the, it looks like we were in Mexico, but we weren't, we were just at Universal Studios. Yeah. That's and, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It does look like it in Mexico. And yeah. there's the display. Yeah. As well. Yeah. My you... book signing at uh, in Palm Springs at oh. uh, a wonderful store called Just Fabulous. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. So the book itself really is mm -hmm. uh, your memoir, but a, a labor of love. And uh, yeah. The response to it has been, I mean, the name again, stars in their mm -hmm. underwear is fantastic, but the, the response from the entertainment community, from the artistic community, as well as the public, I know has been mm -hmm. wonderful. And that must make yeah. you feel uh, really good that people are responding to it and, and yeah. really enjoying the stories and your authenticity and the open way that you approach this book. Well, it is. It's always wonderful when someone writes or calls or tells me, you know, how they experience the book. Um, and I just got a letter the other day from someone um, who said, I was expecting just, a, you know, a lightweight book with some celebrity stories. She said, but it sucked me in and it moved me and, um, you know, inspired me. And, um, you know, that was wonderful to hear. And um, I've heard people say that the way I write, they feel like they're sitting right next to me and they could come and have a cup of coffee with me and I'd tell them another story. That's gratifying too. So um, yeah, I wanted to write the, the, you know, the celebrity stories, but also with a little bit more of the heart and, um, you know. Ever have a situation with a star not wearing any underwear? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> that to be in the sequel, folks. <laughs> yes. There was one star we had to ask to please wear underwear. To please. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. it, right? Oh, yeah. Boy. yeah. That's, but, uh, do you, you know, see? Yeah, anything happens, right? <laughs> you go with the flow. Um you know, when you look at this iconic career and all the people you've worked with and all and now you're, you know, you've been teaching, you're writing about it, we're celebrating it, obviously, and the brilliant dancing career as well. It all comes together full circle for you. What are some of those blessings and joys in your life that, uh, you know, you turn to when you look at all of this uh, iconic career that you've had over the years? Oh, well, I mean, I have been blessed with wonderful mentors who've helped me. Um, I mean, it's hard to tie it all together, but, you know, um, I, this may sound a little not responsive to your question, but in a way it is. Last night I went to see um, a show here in Las Vegas, um, and it's a... Uh, headlining Derek Huff, the dancer from um, um, Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars, yeah. And he has his own show on Broadway. He is a brilliant dancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, a brilliant dancer. Um, and watching him, I could first of all, I couldn't take my eyes off him. He is so breathtakingly good. And it made me feel proud to have been a dancer. It made me feel proud that here's this dancer that I don't even know personally, but, you know, 
he has a his own show in Las Vegas. How many dancers become headliners? It's always the singers, you it's know. The singers and right, or the comedians, yeah. right. And all the young dancers up on stage and the beautiful costumes. I mean, I wanted to go backstage and just hug them all, you know? Yes. So, um, my life is, is full of joy. Um, seeing other people succeed um, yeah. in, in things. Um, and then, of course, I have wonderful friends, and I travel, and I can't wait for 2022. And I hope things stay that it's that it's okay. Yes, got a trip better now. and better. Yeah. So um, you know, life is good, and I'm I'm grateful to everybody in my life. And a beautiful cat who makes uh, self oh. known every once in a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> she was on my lap for a while, but yes. Uh, she didn't, she didn't poke up her head. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, I tell you, it really is amazing when you, uh, when you think about it, did you ever early on, I mean, what would you, what would Diana of now say to that 12 year old Diana? Oh gosh. Relax girl. <laughs> you know, that's what everybody says. They say like, mm -hmm. it's okay. Breathe. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Yeah. We don't learn that till later no, when the wisdom much comes. Later. Right? Yeah. I was always ambitious. I was always striving. I was very often <laughs> miserable. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, um, driven. driven. Um, so uh, it, it is until you, you get a little further along that you can see that it's all going to be okay. It's, it's all going to work okay. out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't become a famous ballerina, so what? <laughs> <laughs> but look at all of the incredible things you've done and, and yeah. continue to do and the people yeah. that you've been exposed to that maybe you wouldn't have been otherwise yeah. Yeah. and uh, have been able to write about it. And uh, do you see another book in the orphan? Did you offering? Did you enjoy the writing process? Has the bug I love you? writing. Um, I've been writing um, mainly just kind of feature articles for um, yeah. the travels. I've been writing a number of travel articles. Um, I started writing another book, um, but I've been so busy that I keep thinking mm, it's it may have to wait a little bit. Yeah, and um, it, it's a book that might not be have as many funny stories, but it's about um how to um how to retire and feel fulfilled what a great idea yeah. i think something yeah. like that is definitely needed right because yeah. sometimes people they don't when they retire right they think well, everything has stopped yeah. and it's all over exactly exactly it's a, it's a second act actually. well you know when you think about it if you kind of life expectancy right now is <clears throat> quite long so if you're going to live to be 90 that's a, your retirement is the last third of your life last yes 30 years you're going to yeah. be retired more or less give or take and they may and soon they, have a pill that will extend that <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like you know you work you retire you have a couple of years and then you kick it you know it's just not like that you've got a long period of life that you have to make meaningful so, Very uh, ironic that a dancer would say, kick it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's it. <laughs> well, there's somebody that is here that uh, just wanted to say hello. He pops in usually towards the latter part of the show. Mr. George Burns is with us. Hello, Isn't George. that cool? Yes, yeah. yes, Never had yes. a chance to work with him or be in the same uh, area as him at any time. No, no. He, he was something, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So well, of course, <laughs> Anne Margaret, if you can do one degree of separation, spent many years with Anne Margaret and George. Yeah. George Burns. And her. Mickey Rooney worked with Anne, of course, mm -hmm. too, on yeah. Broadway. Yeah. And yeah. 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 This yeah, was my aunt. She collected uh, dolls. And when he turned 100, she made sure she got this limited collector's doll and it had been oh, yeah. passed, passed down to me. Yeah. So uh, we show it at the end and it surprise everybody. Yeah. Looks, looks just like him, huh? With the cigar and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and would you say uh, that he's uh, 
dapperly dressed. Oh, oh, absolutely. Thumbs yes, up indeed. from you. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a little ruffles at the sleeve. <laughs> now that Mr. Blackwell is no longer with us, <laughs> you uh, yeah. can put thumbs up for George. Yeah, yeah. That is funny. That's yeah. really, I tell you, this was a wonderful conversation, uh, Thank Diana. You. Pleasure to have the opportunity to welcome you to our show and learn a little bit more about your extraordinary career, yeah. the okay. person behind all of this extraordinary work, the dancer as much as the uh, costume designer and the author. And I hope that the show met uh, whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as oh. I certainly have with you. Absolutely. And I, I, you know, wish I could have seen all of the comments from your, your levities yes. and, um, and spoken directly to them. I hope they felt that I was talking. Oh, they are here. Jane is watching yeah. in Sweden and she says, uh, thank you, Diana, uh, for being with us. Such an interesting career that you've had. Uh, MK Clark says, wonderful show, Jim and Diana. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen Walker in New York City loves all the photos we've been showing. Oh, Joan Sandow says, wonderful photos, Diana. Thank you for sharing your stories with all of us loveities. Jane says, lovely photos, Diana. Linda in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, Aw, adorable so photos. And uh, Kathleen says, thank you for being here, Diana. Anything she missed, she's going to watch this show again in our oh, archives. Cool. Anybody oh. watching, you can see this whole episode again and almost 600 episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series right here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, and subscribe to the channel while you're there. We'd love it. Give us a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed this episode and leave a comment on the channel. Linda says, thank you, Diana, for sharing your life and career with all of us. Please do come back. Absolutely. Uh, another wonderful show, Jim. Thank you. You're the best host. Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate that. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Gary says, what a great show so far. Uh, <laughs> I think he posted that earlier. We I think we're, go we're, go <laughs> we're going back in time, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. Kathleen mm -hmm. had welcomed you. Uh, they were talking about some of the dresses and how oh, beautiful cool. and uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they were really commenting very, very nicely about all these wonderful oh, things. Um, Linda had asked a question. Of all the mm -hmm. celebrities you designed clothing for, did you ever design wedding gowns? And we showed some yeah. of that as well. Yeah. Um, cool stuff. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for all these great comments too. And uh, mm -hmm. Diana, you have an interesting career, actor, author, costume designer. You are truly wow. blessed with those talents. Thank you, Linda. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for these great comments. Uh, I love, you know, we're very interactive on this show, yeah, which so I cool. love. That's so uh, cool. Wonderful show. Thank you, Gary. And thank you, uh, Linda. And uh, Jane says, thank you, Dinah, for being with us. Such an interesting career you've had as well. And uh, Truly, uh, lots of levity here on the Gym Masters Show yeah. live from everybody. Yeah. And uh, they will definitely go out and get the book. They've been talking about that already. And they were very oh, excited great. that you're going to be joining us. Great. Congratulations on this. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank and, you. And this epic career. And Linda says, you're quite welcome, Diana. <laughs> They're very cordial, the levities, too. Yes, They're yes. very, very cordial. <laughs> But truly, I hope that the show met whatever expectations it had and you enjoyed the time with me Absolutely. as much as I have with you. Absolutely. Um, you were uh, a delight to have on the show and uh, we will have you back. And hopefully if uh, you're on the East Coast or I'm on a television shoot in Las Vegas or what mm -hmm. have you, love to get together and break bread. That would be yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And you, and you um, in Las Vegas, maybe for uh, MGM. The yes, right. Yes. And there's several of my friends that are performers that are on stages there as well. And oh, yeah. um, Smith Center and a lot of the oh, other yeah. places where they're performing. Yeah. Yeah. Gary says, uh, very talented in many ways. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you even got a chance. I mean, we took you behind the scenes. You got a chance to see her iron too. And the yeah. ironing board. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's as We're authentic as it gets. There it is. I mean, there you go. She's got <laughs> right there. What is the room that you're in? We could do a little Edward R. Murrow person to person. Um, it's, it's my second story workroom. Um, and it's wonderful because I get uh, light from, from two sources from the window. Well, and um, I can make a lot of mess up here and not have to worry that um, anyone's mm -hmm. going to see it. And I write up here and I uh, 
do shows like this and I so so it's my space and I love you, it. You, you make you great make... use of that space too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. I would imagine you're also admiring um, some of the other, when you see other, like the Met Gala, some of those costumes, those dresses, those suits and all, mm -hmm. that must excite you too. When you see oh, the awards shows, just whenever. Yeah, shows, yes. 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 There's, there's some that get a little weird, but that's okay. Yeah. Weird could be good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exa exactly. Yeah. You're a delight. Uh, best of the holidays to you Thank and you. Uh, Thank to your you. family. And uh, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. We Great. encourage folks to get the book. Book available at Amazon and mm -hmm. uh, your website as well. And yep. uh, we just want to say thanks for all the time. Really beautiful person, beautiful spirit inside and out, Diana. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I How did I do with the jacket today, too? Huh? I pretty, use a fabulous. Sniffy, yeah, huh? I love it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, bling, bling, bling. I love bling, bling, bling. bling. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you today. I never never met a sparkle I didn't like. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. You take care. Be well. Thank you. And uh, best of everything in 2022. And we'll chat again soon. Okay. Great. Absolutely. Thank All you. Right. Bye bye now. Bye. Diana Eden, the one and only here on the show. For those of you who were tuning in because you knew about her renowned costume designing career, but didn't know she was also an acclaimed dancer as well. Now, you know, and also a brilliant author. And if you haven't had a chance to pick up a copy of her book, well, we're going to call it up again and we're going to show it to you guys because it is definitely worth getting. I know many of you have been commenting that you're going to get it there. It is right there. And uh, I think that's really cool. And you never know, maybe you see her at one of the book signings too, as uh, time marches on, but truly spectacular. And it was so wonderful having her here on the show. The name of the book is Stars in Their Underwear. You can get it on uh, Amazon and also her website as well. So make sure you, uh, you do that. And again, she was amazing, right? Truly an Emmy nominated as well. We talked about television shows and film and productions of all kinds, stage and literally everything. She's had her opportunity to really sink her teeth into the arts in such a deep way and really extraordinary to have her here on the show. And always a blessing when all of you are with us as well. Um, I do want to show you a couple of cool things that uh, coming up, wow, an hour and a half from now, I better eat dinner quick. We have an extraordinary uh, show coming up. We have the wonderful, the graceful tenor, Vittorio De Carlo is going to be joining us for a very special Christmas episode live. He's going to sing Christmas carols and all kinds of cool things. That's coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific tonight. Then tomorrow on Saturday, we're back. Loretta LaRoche, the extraordinary humorist, stress expert author is going to be with us. She is a barrel of laughs. I love her perspective on life. I interviewed her several times on PBS for some of her PBS specials. She's extraordinary. She was with us, I say about a year ago as a guest. She's coming back on to get us all through the holiday season. She's going to be with us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Tomorrow night, Debbie Campbell country music singer, activist, and Glenn Campbell's daughter is going to be with us. She wrote a fabulous book. Yes, Life with My Father, Glenn Campbell. Hey, speaking of Las Vegas, Clint Holmes, our buddy Clint Holmes, was with us just a couple of nights ago. He's a Las Vegas icon, singer, songwriter, uh, also born in England, yes, and grew up in Buffalo, New York. His mother, a famous, uh, wonderful, uh, incredible uh, British classically trained opera singer, and his dad, uh, an American uh, jazz performer. And uh, he, Clint was, that was an epic conversation. And not only was Clint on, but his lovely wife, Kelly Clinton Holmes, popped on and their dog, Jojo, was on that episode too. If you didn't see from Little House on the Prairie, Karen Grassley, that episode's quite popular. She was with us just a couple of nights ago. She also wrote a fabulous book as well. My friends from Celtic Woman were on. Yes, Megan and Murrin were on recently, and uh, 
yeah, I'm sure uh, Diana uh, admires those beautiful gowns <laughs> that Celtic women are known for. I've interviewed all of the Celtic woman ladies over the years. Uh, this is two of the most recent, uh, and they joined us as well. Barry Livingston, you remember from My Three Sons, Ernie Douglas, he was on the show recently as well, and many, many more. That is just the short list, folks. Uh, we work hard here. Do something special. Help us grow and share the lovity. We really appreciate that. Tell everybody about our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. We would love that. A channel dedicated to entertaining, informing, educating, and inspiring. As we always say, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love that as well. Very easy to do. You just click that red button and look what happens. Boom. You are subscribed. And also, don't forget to uh, give this episode and all the episodes that you enjoy a like and leave a comment on our YouTube channel as well. We would absolutely love that. Before we go, we always say, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the famous JMS Lovity. Don't forget to find your Zen place as well. Mine is with loving family and friends, but of course the ocean, that's the mighty Atlantic here on the East Coast in the Northeast. That's actually in the New York area on the South shore of Long Island, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing, and I love the ocean. And also uh, my career in television, radio, stage, and film over the years here in the United States uh, and elsewhere, I have uh, always thoroughly enjoyed. So that's another Zen place as well. So we always say that uh, find your Zen place and share the lovity. We're going to be back momentarily at 8 o'clock. I'm going to have to eat that dinner fast, huh? With uh, Vittorio De Carlo, the brilliant, graceful tenor for a very special Christmas episode. So till then, for all of us, Jim Masters here thanking you for your time. This time till next time, we'll see you on the next episode of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Thanks for being with us, folks. And we thank Diana Eden for gracing our presence as well. We'll see you soon, okay? Be good to one another, and thanks for joining us. Cheers. <laughs>